Okay, so continuing on the topic of dihybrid inheritance and unlinked genes, we want to talk about a concept known as epistasis. During epistasis, what happens is two genes at different loci interact with each other to affect one phenotype. Now, if you look at the statement and you don't understand what that means, do not worry. Let's look at it. So let's see what is not epistasis. In the previous video that I did about dihybrid inheritance, I gave you the example of a gene for body color and a gene for body shape. You see, the gene for body color over here will affect, you know, the color of the organism and the gene for body shape will affect the shape of the organism to make it a red triangle. So over here you have two phenotypes because one phenotype is color, one phenotype is shape. So this is not epistasis because in this case, two genes affect two phenotypes. But in epistasis, the thing that happens will be two genes at different loci affect one phenotype. As an example, as you can see here for epistasis, there is a gene for body color which makes the color red, but there is a different gene. Look at that gene. It's on a different chromosome, it's on a different loci, and they affect color intensity, where it makes the red color become like a dark red, almost to like a brownish color. So you see two different genes, but it affects how many phenotypes? It only affects one phenotype. So that is what epistasis is all about. Now, as an example here, this is just a past paper example, the flower color in I pur purpuria, I don't know how to pronounce that, I purpuria, it's just a type of plant, uh, is controlled by two genes on different chromosomes. That's your clue. Two genes on different chromosomes means that it is unlinked. The genes capital R, small r, which codes for the protein involved in pigment production, has two alleles, where large r, uh, the large r over here will produce the pigments, and the small r allele, which is the recessive allele, allele will prevent pigment production, making the flower become a white color. Now, in the different gene, which is gene number two, which is on the different chromosome as well, large T will determine the type of pigment it produces, which has two alleles. Large T makes it purple flower, small T makes it red flower. So as you can see here, both the genes are actually interacting with each other because gene number one influences whether pigments are produced or not, and gene number two will influence what colors the pigment going to be. Is it going to be purple or is it going to be red in color? Now, as an example, if the genotype of the parent is large R, large R, large T, large T, the plant can produce pigments as mentioned in gene number one. And because it's large T, large T, it will be purple in color. That's what that means. But what about number two, large R, small R, Again, the large R allele dominant can produce pigments, but because it's small t, small t, it will make the flower become red. But something interesting happens here when it's small r, small r, because they said that if the small r allele is present and it's homozygous recessive, and there are no dominant alleles, for there's no large r, the small r, small r will prevent the flower from producing pigments of any color and it will cause the plant to become white color. So even though there's small t, small t there, which was supposed to make the flower color red, remember, small t and large t can only be expressed if pigments are produced. So if pigments are not produced at all, automatically the plant will be white in color. So that's how it is. So as you can see here, gene one and gene two will actually affect one phenotype, and that phenotype is just flower color. So complete the results to show a cross between two plants that are heterozygous, which is large R, small R, large T, small T. So remember, due to independent assortment, the gamut will be large R, large T, large R, small T, small R, large T, small R, small T. That is due to independent assortment that happens there. Same for the other organism. And then put in the gametes. 
we are doing a Punnett square over here. Now, in this case, the ratio will not be 9331 because there are only three possible phenotypes. They, they can only be red, purple, or white. 9331 can only happen when there are four phenotypes, but in this case, there's phen three phenotypes. When it comes to epistasis, you do not need to memorize the ratio. It's not important because the ratio will be slightly different. So put in all the genotypes as we normally do, and then put in the phenotypes. I've highlighted this small r, small r over there. Remember, if it's homozygous recessive for gene number one, small r, small r, pigments cannot be produced no matter what, so the plant will be white in color. Okay, it doesn't matter if it has large T or small T. The large T and small T alleles can only show its effect if large R is present. If only small r, small r is present, they cannot produce pigments, so the flower is automatically white. And then put in all the other colors. If there's large r and there's large t, the flower will be purple. And if there's large r and only small t, it will be red. And the ratio in this case is 9, 3, 4. 9 purple, 3 red, and 4 white. Uh, so epistasis is quite commonly, commonly asked in the exam as well. If we were to look at another example of epistasis, as you can see here, the figure shows a raspberry plant which have spines. And in this case, the color of the spines is controlled by two genes. So, so you see, there's only one phenotype. The phenotype is the color of the spine, but it's controlled by two genes. That is epistasis. So the two genes are on different chromosomes, which means unlinked genes. Capital A allele produces a pink anthocyanin pigment on the spines, which makes it pink in color. But large B has no effect by itself, but increases the color produced by allele capital A to make it red spines. So large B can influence the large A allele in this case. And alleles small a and small b have no effect on color. In the absence of anthocyanin, the spines are green. So as you can see here, large A produces a pink anthocyanin pigment. Small a, in this case, no effects at all, okay? And large B, if capital A allele is present, it makes the spine become red in color, okay? And for small b, no effects. So state the color of the spines of the raspberry plants with the genotype of large A, small A, small B, small B, and small A, small A, large B, large B. So if it's large A, small A, it's able to produce the pink anthocyanin pigment. Small B has no effect on the color. So it will be pink spines. Simple as that. Small A, small A, large B, large B. Small A, small A cannot produce the pink anthocyanin pigments, so the color won't be pink, and large B can only influence large A alleles, so immediately it does not have any effect as well, because there's no large A alleles here, so the color of the spines are green. Let's try another one just for the fun of it, large A, small A, large B, small B. In this case, it's able to produce the pink anthocyanin pigments, and because there's large B, it will influence the large A allele to make it red spines. This is another example of epistasis that is asked in the exams. So I hope you understand what epistasis or gene interactions mean.